1051 Bob Rocks, Harrisonburg's Real Rock Station. Event Sevenfold, welcome to the family. What's going on? It is Rebel Bob in the morning. And I am very proud to say, man, we have legendary skateboarder Bill Toko on the phone with us this morning. What's going on, Bill? Hey, what's going on, man? Oh, man, you know, just chilling, trying to get through the morning like we do. Now, Bill, for those of you who don't know, what, what are you doing now? Uh, well, I'm still skating after all these years, of course, but I'm actually in the waste business. And uh, I also do some music on the side. And, uh, you know, also skating a ton. And I'm um, hooked up with this new company, Legion Skateboards, out of Indianapolis. So we're kind of doing a new project with them, new boards and wheels and stuff like that. Now, tell me about some of the new boards you got coming out. I've seen some uh, some boards. I saw I saw one badass board with two aliens on it, and of course the big D on the top for Detroit. Tell me about that yeah. board. Yeah, that's the newest one actually. That's aliens and the big D. That's my new model, and uh, actually that 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 one comes in a whole bunch of smaller sizes uh, as well for kids who dig street and stuff. I'm more of a pool and transition rider, so we're actually going to have a pool shape coming out soon. I'll look for that one, too, and that's going to be a, a bigger board, you know, for some of those older guys like me. Now, is that something maybe called Beyond Failure? Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, that's it, and that's, that's the one. See, I'm smart. Yeah. I do my research. Now, tell me about tell me about Beyond Failure. What's what's going to be on it, man? Tell me about it. you got to give me the inside scoop. Beyond Failure, the whole concept behind that is, um, you know, people think of that title, and they might think, well, Beyond Failure, that might be negative but actually what it means is when your body and your and your mental capacity can go no further you have to learn how to take your whole spirit past that point of failure so it's called beyond failure so it's actually complete opposite what people probably think it is and they probably think it's negative but it's actually positive that's... so that's kind of uh the whole concept behind that board Man, that's really sick, dude. And, I, and you know, it, it makes sense at the same time, too, because there really is anybody that's done anything. It doesn't have to be skateboarding. Anybody that's done any kind of sports, you know, football. I used to, you know, be a pit crew in, in NASCAR. Uh, I know my boy Captain K-Bob was a big baller back in the day. Whatever you do in sports, you always have that moment of, you know, there is no failure. You're beyond that. We have to do yeah. this, and you actually have to make it happen. And, dude, I love that concept. It's really badass. Well, I, just to tie in with a little bit, because I know you guys are from Virginia, of course. Uh, some of my best memories of a lot of skaters in Virginia, one of my first national-level contests as an amateur when I was 14 years old was uh, going down to Alabama, and all the guys that I met from Virginia Beach really, really helped me out and steered me in the right direction in, in early in my career. They were the kind of people that were like those beyond failure type of guys. You know, they really didn't care, you know, what your name was, how good you were, it was how you were as a person. And if they saw something in you that, you know, you had respect for them, they respected you no matter what, and they really pushed me in the right direction, all those guys from Virginia Beach, and they used to have that ramp there. Of course, you probably remember Thrashmore, Thrashmore, so, you know, that was like a big deal with Virginia Beach and stuff. Yeah, Harrisonburg's Real Rock Station, 1051 Bob Rocks. Alter Bridge with Isolation. What's going on, Rebel Bob, in the morning? And uh, we've been talking on the phone this morning with legendary skateboarder. This guy is amazing, Bill Toko. He's on the phone with us now. Now, Bill, earlier you were talking about your amateur career. Uh, and when was that, actually? Was that, that was like, what, mid to late 80s, something like that? You were an amateur? Yeah, actually it was. Um, I, my last year as an amateur was in 87, and I won every contest that the NSA put on that year. And I didn't you have the... Uh, actually in history to do that, win all the contests. That's amazing. Just, now, now, how do you feel, you know, back then, if you could take yourself back there and remember, you know, going through that year and you're, you're winning everything, and you get to the last contest of the year, how do you feel going into something like that? And then, at the same time, how do you feel after it's over? Okay, well, okay, yeah, that's a great question. I'll tell you something. The strange thing was is uh, coming into that contest, they had split the United States up into different sections. And so each section of the country uh, had different groups. So the East Coast had a northern East Coast and a th southern East Coast. The Midwest had an upper and lower and then the West Coast was, like, from Arizona to, to California. Right. So the Midwest 
was probably looked at as the complete, that whole group, which included a lot of good people and skaters from Texas as well as Michigan and Illinois and stuff like that, were completely the underdogs of the whole country. And at that time from Texas, uh, Brian Pennington was one of my teammates on GNS and myself and uh, a couple other guys, and they actually did real well coming out of that Midwest region, but no one expected us to do anything because really the Midwest was never really, you know, getting too much publicity. Right. The East Coast, you did a little bit more. You know, you had some Florida people and some people up in, uh, you know, upper, you know, northwest or northeast got more a little bit more coverage and of course all the California so the Midwest was a complete underdog so the first contest for our region for the Midwest region was in St. Louis and I won that and that was like you know probably the first major contest I ever won so that was kind of cool but that was considered just the first step as a district contest and then you know as you move on that the country you know it gets smaller so each group that moves on you know, less people were in it. So then it happened to be the Midwest Regionals. It was all the guys from Texas and then a few people who made it from Michigan and Ohio. And I ended up winning then. Brian Pennington got second. And the other GNS writer from Texas, who was real good at the time and real young at the time, uh, was David Nielsen. He ended up getting third. So it was me, Pennington, and Nielsen. So then when it came down to the finals, which the whole country was competing in, including the, you know, the West Coast, uh, a contingent also was in Phoenix, Arizona, was in Sona. And I, he honestly, going into that contest in the finals, looking at the, you know, the top 20, 15 people there, all those guys ended up going pro and they were really good. So I was just thinking, man, if I could get in the maybe top eight of this contest, I'd be happy. I had no, you know, idea that I was going to win it, to be honest. That's awesome. No idea. So it was pretty, pretty amazing for me. Now, it was after that that you went pro, correct? Yep, yeah, yep, for GNS. And, and when you went pro, you know, it wasn't like going pro nowadays where you go pro and all of a sudden you're a huge star and you're on TV and you're a millionaire. Um, no, not at all. <laughs> you, you, know, how, you know, talking about that now, how do you think skateboarding has changed from the time you went pro to, like, say, guys like Ryan Sheckler that are ripping it up now on street courses? Uh, I think it's changed a lot. The, number one, I think, I think the main thing that has changed is that there's a lot more people, kind of in the mainstream that skate, kind of compared to like back then. I mean, if you back in the early '80s, if you were street skating down the street or you were even driving in a car and you saw someone on a skateboard, it was a huge deal. I mean, it was a serious big deal. You would, you like actually would stop your car or get out and talk to the person. Right, or make right. your parents like pull over. I mean, now there's so many people doing it. It's not quite the same uh, factor when you see someone. And and let you me know, ask you, you, don't freak out as much. I mean, that's one big thing. And let me ask you this, you know, that's one of the things, I guess, is now it's a little bit more mainstream, where back in the day, you know, people didn't see it. Now it's become really mainstream, really popular with, you know, help from MTV and, of course, ESPN, the X Games and everything. Do you think it's almost getting to the point of being too commercial now? Uh, you know what? I think it's just, I'd like to say yes, but on the other hand, I mean, I think it's sometimes a natural evolution of, of anything. I mean, if you're, like, in any kind of sport, it's probably going to grow and get bigger. I think it's too commercial, but, you know, on the other hand, if some, some people weren't around when I was... They might just think it's the norm, you know what I mean? Right. No, I got you 100%. But uh, getting back to that point of, like, how is it different, I can give you one great example. Back when we used to go to our home in our original skate park, which was Endless Summer Skateboard Park, and um, that was open in 1978 and closed in 1984. It was in Roseville, Michigan. That's where I met all the core guys that I still core guys skate with today, Bill Danforth, uh, Chris Opie Moore. Bill Ferguson, uh, Ward Kramer, a lot of the same guys that skate now. Uh, Greg Fidel, who's actually a downhiller for pocket pistols. He's one of the top five in the world. Those guys are still around. And the thing is, is going back to the going to the park back in those days, it was like you never knew it was going to happen every day. It was like an adventure because there were so many individuals uh, with character and stuff. Now when you go to a skate park now, it's like, it's not like you really want to hang out with some of these guys because it's like, for them, it's like soccer. 
Right. I'm not saying all the people, but there's a lot of kids that do it because they think it's the cool thing to do. They don't do it because they want to do it like how it used to be. So right. there's some differences for sure there. Right, right. And I appreciate it. And, you know, I think you bring up a good point there, too, Bill. Uh, and if you could, Matt, hold the line for me. i got to get to some more music right quick. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to come back. I want to ask you about your opinion about the future of skateboarding. So hold on. Let me play some music, and we'll come back to you in just a few minutes. All right, Bill? Three Days Grace, Animal Have Become, Terrisonburg's Real Rock Station, the most rock in the morning with your boy, Rebel Bob, 105.1 Bob Rocks. 